Hey everyone, before I start with this, please comment below what videos you guys would like me to make. Uh, this video actually came from a few viewer requests, so I definitely take you guys into account. This is uh, my MCAT and um, six MCAT study tips, so I hope you guys enjoy and let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means a lot to see that so many people are actually watching my videos. It's kind of weird because I'm pretty introverted, so this is like a little bit out of my comfort zone. And it's really fun. It's it's de-stressing. Um, I have a lot of content to study for, but I hope you guys enjoy this video and let me know what you guys want to see in the future and what you guys think. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey everyone, welcome back. I want to thank all of you guys for watching this. I've gotten a bunch of comments on a few of my videos. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think as it goes along if you have a question or anything you'd like to add. Um, today I'm doing a My MCAT Story and My MCAT Study Tips. I got this request from a few viewers through Instagram and also I answered a few questions on a few other videos. So this is me explaining what I did in the MCAT. So to start off, I had to take the MCAT twice. So I took it twice. I didn't destroy it the first time around like I recommend you guys should do. It's an awful exam to study for, but you guys can do it. I took it twice. I'm not going to hide that from you guys. So the first year I took the MCAT, I got accepted into a really cool program at the University of Mexico called the MCAT Plus program. And they actually provided um, the full Kaplan books and, an, and a Kaplan instructor. So we would meet, I think, three, I, it might have been every day for a few hours in the morning and then we had afternoon study time and it was the Kaplan instructor and we got all the books and it was an awesome program. I think that at the time that I took it, I didn't take the MCAT seriously enough. I thought that while well, I'm taking this awesome course that I got for free and it's really expensive, it's like $3,000 and you have a bunch of videos you can access online. It was really awesome. And I didn't take full advantage of it, honestly. Um, that first summer, I took a practice exam every Saturday for 11 weeks before my MCAT. So I took 11 practice tests and my MCAT score was definitely going up, but it, Unfortunately, I didn't get the score I wanted and I was not accepted into medical school that first year. So that was awful. It felt really awful knowing that I had to put so much time and energy into studying for this exam and I didn't get into the... I didn't get into medical school. Um, it was definitely discouraging, but I was not going to give up. So the second year around, uh, what I did is I got the Princeton Review books. So now I have both Kaplan and Princeton Review. So what I did, I what I did differently the second year, and what really helped me is I did not take as many practice tests. Um, I only took around, I think I took two or three over a span of, I think it was probably a couple months that I studied, um, and I don't have the book here because I let one of my friends borrow it. But I got a next step. 1,000 discrete questions and that really helped me. So what I did differently the second year is instead of taking so many practice exams, I only took a few and this is like kind of already going into my tips for the MCAT, but it doesn't matter how many exams you take if you don't take the time to understand why you got something wrong and why you got something right. So you definitely need to re you need to go over those old exams that you did. Um, even the ones you did good on, you need to know, you need to understand why you got the correct answer. Like, yes, you got the correct answer. You don't just like skip that page. You need to understand why you got the correct answer and why the other answers are incorrect. And you need to do that for every single question on the, on the science, on the science portions, on the psychs, um, biochem, chemistry, biology. That really helped me do that. Um, cars, I was never really able to improve my score no matter how much I studied or tried diff like the Kaplan strategy or a different Princeton review strategy. I did my own thing and that got me the score. 
Um, I needed to get into medical school, so I'm happy, but I, I don't really have advice on how to improve your car score. I'm sorry about that. Um, but now I'm gonna get into a few tips that I recommend when you're studying for the MCAT. So the first tip I, the first tip I recommend for everybody studying for the MCAT or getting study buddies to study for the MCAT is do not compare yourself to how others are doing on the test. Okay, this is really important. Yes, you are competing for, you are competing against thousands of medical students, thousands of applicants to get into medical school, but it doesn't matter what your friend next to you, it doesn't matter what score they have, it matters what score you have. So you really need to focus on your score, and if the people you're hanging around with are making you feel bad about your score, you really need to make sure that you are focusing on your own score, okay? My second tip was exactly what I said earlier, so you need to go over each and every practice exam that you take and focus and see why you got a question right and why you got a question wrong. This is super important. It probably takes longer than what it would take you to take the to take the actual practice exam, okay? So you just took that practice exam seven hours. So take a break. The following day, go over like half of it, um, question by question, why you got it right, why you got it wrong. That is so much more important than the amount of tests you take and I think that's what I did wrong the first year. I did not go over each question and understand why I got something right or why I got it wrong. Um, my third tip is that whenever you take a full length practice exam, you're going to be able to see what your weak areas were, okay? So are you going to be, are you weak in your biochem? So, or are you weak in your biology or your psychology? So what I really recommend is instead of studying everything, focus on like one section that you're weak on and just take, do practice questions, study that a lot. Like if you're short on content, like review the books. These books are great for content, but you really need to practice. That's why I got that next step. It was just 1000 discrete questions and that really helped me. So just study that section, study questions, take practice questions, um, and then like I said, understand why you got it right or why you got it wrong whenever you go over them, okay? I was doing around 100 practice questions every day for like a week before I took another, and you don't have to take a full length, just take like a section test if you can. It might be cheaper and just to see if what you're doing is working to improve that one score. And then once you feel comfortable with it, take another full length and then see what you're weak in there and just like target those areas you're weak in. So are you weak in bio, are you weak in biochem, are you weak in psych, soch? Um, cars, I, I, I was not really able to improve my score by a lot whenever I was studying for it. Um, I can't really give you guys um, suggestions on how to improve your cars, but your sciences, you guys can improve on it. Just do practice questions, know why you got it right, know why you got it wrong. And I think that's what's really important. All right, my fourth tip is whenever you're studying a section, say, like I said, you wanna do 100 questions of this section, or you wanna read like one chapter in the book and take notes, put your phone away. Put your, throw it in like a trash bag and put it in your room, I don't care, put it on site and turn it off. Do not grab your phone, do not look at anything until you finish that one section and what you wanted to get done in that session. I cannot stress this enough. Our phones are taking over our lives um, and just like TV and constant distractions everywhere, but you really need to focus and get in the zone to understand this material. And when you're doing that, you need no distractions, okay? Really put your phone away, get that done, and you guys can do it, okay? Um, just if you feel crappy like halfway through the session, I would just push through it. Like, yeah, it sucks. The MCAT sucks. It's a long test, but push through it. You guys can do it. Thousands of people have done this before you and you guys can do it too. Just get rid of those distractions. That was a big part of why I didn't do so well the first year, I think. And that is a tip I highly, highly recommend, okay? All right, and number five. So a lot of people recommend having MCAT study schedules and that is great. I think study schedules are a really good idea. I didn't use one personally myself. Um, this goes back to my tip number four. Whenever you're going to do a section, know that you have the time to do it and attack it. Do not let anything hold you back. 
you just go for it and learn the material. That is, I, I just can't stress that enough. That's basically like tip four and five is like the same tip. Like the study schedule didn't really work for me. I think just because I was working and there, there was like other things going on in my life, I couldn't really like just block off this one section, like these two hours. I never knew when I had to get up and do something else. So that's why whenever you do study, make sure you have the time to do it and go for it. Just attack it even though you feel crappy halfway through, fight for it, get through it. And if you didn't get the, if you didn't get the content or whatever you wanted out of that one session, you might have to do the session all over again in another time, but you did not give up. And that is one of the big things about getting into medical school. Do not give up. Okay, it takes perseverance. It takes a lot of hard work. Yeah, you have to be smart, but I really think that if you persevere and fight for it, you will get in. So one thing that I like to do, what I did the year before and the the year that I, the first year I took the MCAT and the second year I took the MCAT, go to your testing station, like drive there in your car, figure out how you're gonna get there and where you're gonna park a day before. I tested at the same center both years, but I did that both, both I did it both years. Um, just so you, that's not like another stress in the morning, it'll be okay. Whenever you're in the room with the other testy, with the other testers, um, don't psych yourself out, okay? You studied for this, you be in your zone. It doesn't matter what the other testers scored on their practice exams if they're talking in the waiting room. Do not let that like get into your head, okay? Some people like to talk about how they were doing on the practice tests. Just zone them out, you're there for yourself. Um, you're there to meet your own goals and you don't have to please anybody in that room, okay? Um, you're there for yourself and for your future patients, all right? So zone them out. You got this. Just go in there and do your thing, okay?